My name is Zoe Scott, and I'm a supervising marine biologist with the city's ocean monitoring program. Today, I'm going to tell you about our trawl sampling. To monitor these communities of bottom-dwelling fish and invertebrates, like crabs or urchins, and determine what factors may be impacting their populations over space and time, the city's marine biologists sample a set of stations twice each year. The gathering of this data gives us important information about the health of our environment and helps us assess whether coastal waters are being impacted by wastewater discharge or other human activities. So, how does this monitoring take place? First, we deploy a large net behind the boat, which is pulled along the seafloor to collect bottom-dwelling fishes and invertebrates at specific locations offshore. These sites are found at depths ranging from about 90 to 330 feet. The net we use is known as an otter trawl. It is equipped with heavy wooden doors on each side, chain lines along the bottom, and float lines along the top to help keep the net open and on the seafloor while the boat is underway. Second, after a brief 10-minute trawl, the net is pulled to the surface and brought safely on board. At this point, marine biologists work quickly to identify all fish and invertebrates, sorting them on a table with flowing seawater to help keep the animals alive. During a single 10-minute trawl, we have brought in hauls as heavy as over 1,500 pounds. So this step is all hands on deck while we gather essential data before quickly returning the animals back to the sea. Third, fish and invertebrates are identified and counted. For each fish, length and weight are measured to evaluate fish population dynamics. We also record the presence of any abnormalities or disease symptoms, such as discoloration, parasites, or tumors, since these can be indicative of the health of the fish community. A small number of fish or invertebrates may be brought back to the lab to confirm their identifications, but most animals are released back into the ocean within minutes after being brought on board. Fourth, any animals considered too delicate for surface release are transported to depth using specialized equipment to promote their survival. Examples of such animals include bottom-dwelling invertebrates, like octopuses, which would be vulnerable in the midwater if released at the surface. Back at the lab, data collected in the field are reviewed for quality, entered into the database, and later used in the program's annual reports. Community sampling, along with our other monitoring efforts, helps us assess whether the ocean environment is safe and healthy for the marine communities and the citizens of San Diego. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about our findings, I encourage you to check out our annual reports, which you can find on the city's web pages.